Here are some more tips to easily groom hairs in ZBrush. So I've shown already before that you can mask out the fibers. So when I mask out the points of that fiber over here, then I can go and grow the mask a couple of times. And I also do a sharpen mask a couple of times. Again, grow, grow, sharpen it out, grow. And it depends how many segments you had. I had about 20, 20 or 25. Don't remember exactly. But anyway, when you grow the mask and then invert it, now that one hair that you started out by masking that first point and then growing it is clearly visible and of course you can now manipulate it individually or smooth it out and you see throughout the fibers that it gets smoothed so that can be useful way to single out hairs another tip is working with polygroups so when i turn on my polyframe you see that all the hairs are now one polygroup and i can make them individual groups so auto groups and this may take a couple of seconds before it's done so maybe it doesn't take that long so now you have individual polygroups so I can control shift click and all the others have been hidden and now I can individually adjust this one smoothing it out and control click to mask it control shift click to unhide the rest I'm going to turn off polyframe and invert the mask and now I can, of course, continue shaping it because the rest of the hairs are now visible and preserve length. I'm going to turn it off so that I can pull it all the way over here, smooth it out. Of course, if you work smart from the start and make sure that you don't have these hairs that go back all the way like that, then you don't have to do so much individual cleanup. But this, this is just some testing to see how far I can take the manipulation the way I want it to. So masking and even auto grouping in polygroups to single out individual hairs. So when I turn out back my polygrouping, for instance, that one, control shift click, and I can pull that one and I'm going to control mask that part, control click to invert it, go to the end and move it all the way over there, smooth it a bit, just like that, and as you see, I'm going to mask it, unhide the rest, hide my polyframe, invert the mask to see where I am with the rest of the hair, smooth it out. So as you can see with masking and polygrouping, you really can have great control even over each individual hair strand. So here you see me continuing my experimentation with grooming fibers of fiber mesh. So in the background, I had that geometry. I have subdivided it a couple of times more and deleted the lower subdivisions. So I have a much more dense mesh now for ZBrush to have more points 
to work with the front collision detection tolerance and I am working with the move brush and with a bit of elasticity Z of 5 and preserve length in the fiber mesh palette to 15 and I have front collision set to 50 so it is pixels dependent so the further you zoom in the closer the hairs or the fibers will move to the geometry and the further you zoom out then 50 will become a larger distance so it is dependent on how far you zoom in so I can move the hairs in the geometry when I'm looking at the backside because it is front collision detection so now I'm looking to the front collision if you will and I, if I manipulate them again now they will be removed from the geometry again so if I hide it you see that it follows the geometry nicely and I also had started to pull out some hairs more to make him more uniform than I had done previously so I can move him closer to the surface from a different angle and then turn it so that I have my front collision detection from that view and I can of course smooth it out and with smooth if I press the shift key then you see in the brush palette you also have fiber mesh settings for the shift key so when I release the shift key now these are the settings for my move brush when I press the shift key now I have fiber mesh settings for my smooth brush so I can even do the same so front collision detection to 50 reserve length and smooth out the geometry and as you see nice collision detection so I can zoom in closer and now the geometry will be moved closer to the subtool in the background because I have zoomed in so if I hide that subtool the hairs nicely go over the geometry And as shown in previous videos, I can single out individual ones, mask them, invert the mask, turn off my polyframing to actually individually manipulate hairs like that, so smooth it out. And I have my front detection on with a smooth brush, so I can turn it off when I'm not working with the geometry in the background or when it's not visible. So, anyway, I hope this is useful for you. I find it a massive discovery for now. I never have seen anyone doing that before. So turn that back on and go to the front. So this is now the front and you see that the hairs pop over the background geometry. When I turn it off, you see the form of the background geometry is in there. So awesome. Hope you found it useful.